When we think about the bombing of the UK during the Second World War, we often think about the Blitz on London and the use of V1s and V2s with often horrific consequences. But the untold story really is the bombing of the north of England in towns like Grimsby, where new weapons, experimental weapons, were used with devastating and deadly effect. Now, one of these weapons was the first ever cluster bomb called the Butterfly Bomb, and it was used on this region in 1943. And we're gonna explore what happened here, and we're gonna find out how it impacted the local communities during the war. The Butterfly Bomb had three distinct fuses. The first of these was the 41, which exploded on impact and killed or maimed anyone who was in a 150 metre radius. The second, however, was a 67 fuse, and this was a short delay fuse. So it meant that anyone who'd come to help those who were hit by the first bomb were caught in the crossfire when this one exploded. The third, though, was perhaps the most effective, and this was the anti-disturbance fuse. And this meant that when the all clear sounded and people left their homes, the butterfly bomb could be waiting outside, above them, below them, or perilously outside of their door. When the Luftwaffe planes came over the North Sea to conduct their daring and terrifying raid, the first place that was to feel the impact of the butterfly bombs was Cleethorpes. Dan, you've put together this fantastic map of wartime Cleethorpes. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if you could show us from which direction the Luftwaffe planes flew in from and where in Cleethorpes they did the most damage. Right. They came from this direction over Cleethorpes to Grimsby. Mm -hmm. The skies were lit up with phosphorus flares. Yeah. And then high explosives were dropped, mm -hmm. followed by incendiary bombs. And last of all, the butterfly bombs. They were hanging in trees, they were hanging from gutters, they came through roofs. Wow. So they really did cause some mm, chaos they did, around yes. Cleethorpes. People didn't know where they would find them next. And there's a terror that comes with that, isn't there? There is, there is, yes. They didn't know what they were. They didn't realise for a, an hour or two quite what they could do. And then after that, they just didn't dare move. I suppose when people evacuated the town and a lot of people went to visit friends and family in different parts of the region yeah. um, and when they came home what did they find? They found that really the two towns were in lockdown, Grimsby yeah. and Cleethorpes. Um, it, it became very clear that these were very dangerous and new devices yeah. and the uh, people rallied round and helped to put sandbags around any place where one had fallen. So once the butterfly bomb had landed and those armed with the anti-disturbance fuse hadn't gone off and were just lying there in wait, there was very little that you could do to try and make these safe. There was no make safe mechanism. Instead, what the people of Grimsby had to do was they had to tread very lightly round them. Any slight vibration would have set them off. And they had to come together and fill loads of sandbags full of sand like this, heavy beasts, and they'd have to put, well, lots of them in a stack around the butterfly bomb. Ugh. And across the next three days, they built hundreds of these walls through the streets of Grimsby, through the streets of Cleethorpes, so that people could go about their daily lives without the risk of these things going off and the shrapnel killing or maiming anyone who was walking nearby. And that's the problem with this bomb, is it appealed it is. to children it, it so is. much it as well, does. doesn't it? Yes, it affected the children badly. They would lose their independence, wouldn't they, to be able to go anywhere because the parents would be terrified that uh, they would you know, become yeah, maimed next, by them or you, well, yeah, killed. Well, yeah, the next victim of the bomb. Yes. Yeah, you couldn't go and be you free be as a, a child. child. Could you and play, you know, because you just didn't know where you could go that was safe. Look what I found.
what he had found was a German anti-personnel or butterfly bomb. These bombs are being dropped by the enemy for the sole purpose of killing people. The Luftwaffe would use the butterfly bomb in some novel and in fact ingenious ways. They would paint it white and drop it on the ice roads in Russia. They'd paint it yellow and drop it onto the cornfields in the UK. The aim here being to stop the farmers from getting the vital harvest that was there to feed a starving population. In fact, in Grimsby, just one month after the tragic attacks in June, a farmer and his farmhand were killed when they stumbled across a butterfly bomb during their yearly harvest. Louise, we know about the high explosive bombs that were dropped on Grimsby, the 6,000 incendiaries and the 3,000 butterfly bombs that littered the town. But why did the Luftwaffe first strike Grimsby of all places? Well, if we just take a look at this original map, and this actually would have been in the cockpit of the German aircraft and used by the pilot when they were flying well, over the area. Oh, this from the 1940s? Yes. So we can actually see here some areas that have been highlighted as targets. So you can notice here that there are quite a lot of dock areas, and this would have been a prime target for dropping the bombs. In particular, to Grimsby, a lot of trawlers that were actually used before the war to fish were actually converted into minesweepers and would have sailed out of these docks to go and clear the minefields right, in the sea. So these were vessels that had been converted and were fulfilling a military role. And so for the Luftwaffe, they would have been legitimate targets. Absolutely. And Grimsby um, had quite a lot of trawlers that were actually used for minesweeping in both wars, okay. First World War and Second World War, and did a lot of work for the military actually clearing the mines. So that was the first reason that this would have been a target. Yeah. The second reason is you'll notice that there are quite a large number of fish docks here. Yeah. And Grimsby was well on its way during this time period to becoming the biggest fishing port in the world. Wow. So a lot of fish would have been brought in through Grimsby docks and actually travelled to the rest of the country via the railway. So the idea is to cut off the nation's food at its source, which is Grimsby docks. One of the most unique capabilities of the butterfly bomb was its loitering and lingering effect. In fact, that's what made it so deadly. And what I'm holding here is not an original bomb, but this is a replica that was mocked up by the bomb disposal teams. Now, the reason why they did that was because a local woman, as late as the 1990s, donated what she thought was an inert bomb to the local Immingham Museum. Turns out it was live, and what they had to do was call in the bomb disposal teams pretty quickly. Now, they got rid of that safely, but as a lasting reminder, they mocked up a version so that the people of Grimsby could remember its deadly effect. Brian, you were actually there when the butterfly bombs fell on Grimsby, Immingham and Cleethorpes. Yeah. Where were you and can you tell us what happened? Well, I was in the air raid shelter, an Anderson air raid shelter, which was probably the grottiest place to be in. And of course, during the night, we heard the aircraft coming over and we hear various things going on, but we didn't know what it was all about. Because being sort of six year old, you, 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 d you don't appreciate that, the, that it's war in the same vein as an adult would appreciate it. Yeah. So we were sat in the air raid shelter wondering what was going on. Obviously the next morning as, as children, we, one of our little capers, if you like, was to go out and look for shrapnel. Okay. Um, because it was, it was um, a lucrative thing to take to school. Oh, so you'd swap them? Swapping. Little bits you could swap for a bigger bit or, you know, it became very, very lucrative as yeah. schoolboys to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to, to trade shrapnel, if you like. Yeah. But we didn't know um, anything about the butterfly bombs or really anything about the, uh, the incendiaries and the bombs that had formed because that was all kept secret because the army cordoned off areas that you couldn't go in. Right, so wherever a butterfly bomb, so one of these had fallen yeah. across the town. Yes. The army would shut off the streets. Yeah, sandbag it. Sandbag not, it around it. And not allowed anybody to go in. Okay, so you didn't, you weren't near them, you didn't, you couldn't no, go near them. We so couldn't you didn't go near them. No, no, nobody knew anything about them. It was not until much later, uh, when the war had finished, when they had a blitz on finding these butterfly bombs, and they realised um, it's like the casualty wasn't made known to the public. Ah. Nothing was in the local press. 
why were there not more warnings about the butterfly bomb? You'd expect there to be people shouting it across the town, going around in vehicles, knocking on doors, telling people to watch out for this deadly weapon that could maim or, or kill them. Well, from what I understand, the government kept it quiet because of the, the, the impact it may have had um, in Germany. Because obviously, if it had been a success, then Germans would have actually increased this. this. But obviously, keeping it quiet, the Germans... The, the hope was that the Germans thought, oh, it had no impact. Mm. So hopefully, I think the theory was that if they didn't tell them what effect it had, they would stop doing it. So keep it secret. Keep it secret, not tell anybody. But that then sort of rebounded because of people finding these things and not knowing what they were. So the Grimsby region and the people of the Grimsby region were almost sacrificed so that More or other less. towns yeah. could be spared from yeah. the fate of the butterfly bomb. Yeah, but obviously during that period people got killed. Despite the best efforts of the wardens and the bomb disposal teams, by the 19th of July, when the search for the butterfly bomb was finally called off, a staggering 114 men, women and children had died. When we put that into perspective, that equates to almost half of all of those who died in the Grimsby locality as a result of German bombardment during the Second World War. Grimsby may have been the first place where the butterfly bomb was used, but it most certainly wasn't the last. In fact, the Americans thought the idea was so ingenious that in the late 1940s, they developed an exact replica called the M83. Then in the 1950s, they used it during the Korean War, and in the 1960s and 70s, they used it in the Vietnam War, killing thousands. And in fact, if we trace this first use of the butterfly bomb back to Grimsby, and we place it in its transnational history, we can see that it's the important start of a trend in warfare, a trend in the use of cluster bombs, something which continues to affect the lives of people around the world to this day.